Today on this old Strat, we have a 1997 Squire Stratocaster in deep royal blue. It uh, is actually maybe half a shade darker than what you're seeing on the screen here. It has black accessories such as the pick guard, volume and tone buttons, pickup select switch, pickups, and the machine heads. We're going to refurbish this thing, sort of take it apart, clean it up, make sure everything works good inside and out, because it will be going up for sale on Marketplace at the end. Please stand by. So upon closer inspection, we find that it's been sitting for a while. Nobody's been playing it. Uh, there's a little dusty in that, but uh, we have new strings and everything to put on it. Um, we've noticed that there are a few little nicks and crannies here that it has taken over the years. I believe the knobs have been repainted because they do not have the lettering a different color. It is all just completely flat black and the knob hasn't been done to the whammy bar. So a um, little crease here in the pit guard. The pit guard is obviously was made black. It hasn't been painted or anything. Um, but I have noticed that the machine heads which are black, have been changed out. They are uh, pings on here. And you can see in between there the little holes from where the originals were uh, bolted on. So we're going to take a look at this and see what we can do. Um, pull it all apart, get it all cleaned up, see what we have. Off to the bench. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is check out neck relief, which is good. There is just a slight bow to it. It is straight. It is not warped or anything. String action is acceptable range, by all means. Um, and now we're going to make sure we have all our tools together to start stripping it down and find out just what's inside. I did notice that the pickups are way out of alignment. Um, major, major out of alignment. But we'll get that all set up. There's no use in us uh, setting it up before we pull it all apart because, well, we're going to pull it all apart. And so, off to the tool room to get all the tools that I will need. So, one screwdriver has Phillips on one end, straight blade on the other. As everything pretty much on this thing is a Phillips, that's pretty much all we're gonna need until we get to the point where we need the contact cleaner. Uh, at this point, I'm going to take all the strings off. I'm not gonna make you sit through all that and start loosening off all the uh, pick guard and all the buttons and that sort of thing. Uh, we do have fresh new strings to go on it, so we'll check that out at the end. So, if you will hold on for a second, I will take the strings off and we'll be right back. Some of the strings are not coming through the back. I, they just won't come up through, so I'm going to take the back plate off and find out why that is. Um, I've never run into this before. I've only ever taken apart a few guitars in my lifetime, so... We will see what that is. Always be sure to dispose of your strings in a environmentally friendly nature. You have to be careful with them because they are strings and they are dangerous to wildlife and that sort of thing. Um, just be cautious, conscious of other people in that. Coming back at you. Okay, always as well, keep handy a small bin to put your hardware in. Okay, it has all three strings on it. Now, can I do this by hand or am I going to need a tool? I'm going to need a tool. So, off to the tool bin. 
Okay, so what I've no found out was that if you put the whammy handle back on, stretch and wiggle, I have been able to remove some of the other ones. These two are still being a bit of an issue. So what we do is make a little bend in the string here so that once you take this off, you can try and twist the string to yes. Okay, so tech tip of the day. Whammy bar up, wiggle if this happens to you. I've never had this happen before, but I have had my strat block blocked up so that it does not work it does not do anything and hence this is not an issue for it okay i won't make you sit through any more of this so i'll come back once i get it out okay that wasn't very easy uh, i eventually had to, to get all the strings off and wiggle and wiggle and wiggle but it finally did come up through the hole. So now all our strings are off and we can commence taking this thing apart. Here we go. One more thing here, the string disposable. I've got all the knobs at one end. Make sure that they're all in a row. Make sure you have six. One, two, three, four, five, six and wrap okay once you get them in there make yourself a small loop run it up to the end and then just feed all six through the center feed all six through the center and repeat repeat until you end up with one small coil of strings uh, yeah because strings can be horrible things for wildlife they're not even good this way but at least they're all in one spot voila and dispose of properly so next we're going to end up screws because all these screws are all Phillips they're all pretty much the same looking but we got to keep them straight so I've put the six from the back plate back into the back plate and I will set it aside in a manner that none of the strings or screws will disappear and at that point we start with these First thing we though are going to need to do before we get all the pit guard screws out is we are going to have to remove the knobs as the pit guard will not come out without that. So flip to straight blade. No wonder that one took a little time. Gently, gently pry from multiple sides you don't want to break these and as I expected black on the outside white on the inside and although you can see the writing there the writing is all black as well you have to be careful not to damage the pit guard when you're doing that volume is the one that is closest to the pickups volume tone tone always remember that and so that I think we will leave on there and just leave that attached so that it comes off with the switch back as soon as I get all these screws out okay all the pick guard screws have been taken out. I've left the mounting for the pickups 
and the switches and that intact because I'm just going to take everything off at once. You have to be careful because of course there's wires inside that are attached to other ends. There will be wires that go inside down here. There's a tunnel in underneath that those wires go through and one to the back of here so you have to be a little careful with them. But here we go. Okay. So you can see power going down through here. This goes down to your cord pickup. This one goes into the back to ground out the bottom here. Now let's see. I believe maybe this pick guard has been painted as well. If so, it has a good coat on it, but it's white on the back and black everywhere else. I can see a bit of the white where it's so it's been painted black. Okay, well then that explains that. Now, what we've got inside is the cutouts for the pickups and the cutouts for all the buttons and that sort of thing. Let's have a little look at this, see what we're looking at. Okay, one, two, three for the pickups. Pickups don't seem to be have anything written on them. They are black pickups though. They weren't painted white. Pots all seem to be factory. So, numbered one, two, three. So possibly it was just taken apart yet. Yeah, there's a little bit of overspray of the black on the back of this. Okay, so now it is clean up time. We don't know we're not going to bother taking this off or that off. Everything seems to be working good. We don't want to mess with it any more than we have to. But I want to be able to spray these with contact cleaner, make sure that they're all working fine, and just double check the wiring to make sure that we don't have any scratch ends or anything. These are in line to fit up through there and off to the tool room for contact cleaner okay so I don't want to mess with the wires and, and all that so I have taken a very light um, what we used to be an old dish towel you cut off the outer edges so that there's no chance you will scratch anything any of the hems and that I've taken that got a little bit of hot water with uh, just a dab of kitchen like uh, dish soap and I want to wipe down all underneath here so that we can get that back together and it will be much easier to work with without messing up this wiring. What I have noticed here is that the pots are all on a, don't know if you can see it here very well, but there is a metal tape that was put on the back of the pit guard so that all the pots and everything are grounded to each other so you sh that, that re just reduces buzz. Okay, I've cleaned up most of the outside here. You want to make sure you get lines around where the pit guard actually attach. Everything else inside looks to be fairly well. Uh, the pit guard I will do mainly when it gets reinstalled. I will go around the outer edges. 
you want to be very careful because you've got small wires that you really don't want to mess with. My guess is that this was just repainted and obviously he numbered these so that they went back in the right spot because you can see the overspray there. Okay. Finish seems to be fairly well underneath it, like it hasn't faded that much. You could tell from the finish of where's outside as to underneath. Sometimes if this here part will fade, you will notice it when you take the pit guard off. There will be a line going around there, and there is not. Okay. When we come back, I should have this pretty much back on and ready for the next step. One thing I haven't done here yet is spray the pots. I should probably do that right shortly to try and keep everything in tune okay that might mess with the finish so let's be careful don't twist the wires okay be right back okay contact cleaner be very careful because you do not want to Just a slight little bit on each one. Twist. You don't want to over spray too much on the finish. Roll these back and forth a few times. This bottom one's a little tight. This one's a little more loose of the two tones and the volume is a little more loose. One little bit more spray. Clean it off to finish as quick as you can. It's supposed to evaporate into nothing, but why take a chance? Okay, that will evaporate by itself. Let's turn this around, get it out of the way for a bit. Make sure we've got all grease and grime out from underneath. And she looks beautiful. Okay, now course while you're doing this you be careful to make sure that none of the wires are under anything why is that it might just be the pick itself pick guard bent okay then let's start putting the screws back in because Although we're going to clean the pick guard, we don't want it moving around as we're doing it because wires, blah, blah, blah. So, be right back after I get all these screws in and tighten down. Okay, one other thing that I just found out when you're removing the pick guard screws, take a look at them closely because. Some are longer than others. I don't know if you can see how well you can see that, but two of them have a little shank on the end of it. These two longer ones go right beside the whammy setup. And the only reason I know that is because I had to take apart my other strat to try and figure it out. And I couldn't do that because I already messed them up. 
So by trial and error of trying the long screws in each hole, these two were the only two that would accept the longer screws. Remember that when you're taking apart these things, just take special note of that. The more you know. Of course, with the two longer screws, uh, I obviously tried first off the two holes near here, near the selection switch to see if it was maybe there. I tried these two because the where the neck attaches. And once I did the bottom one, then they slipped right in, no problem. So these two screws on the pick guard are longer. Remember that. So now I've got the pick guard reinstalled. Everything tightened. Don't over tighten them because they will strip fairly easily. Now I return to cleaning this up a little bit. As I say, very soft cloth, a little bit of just soap, very little, just enough to give it a bit of a cleaning. And then I'm going to go over the board here, the guard, make sure it's all cleaned up. The edges are all cleaned up and we will go on to the next procedure. Okay, so we've washed down the front and the back real well. Made sure we got any of the lines from the guards. I'm going to give this one another little shot here at the top. I can see a bit of the line, but it might just be there this is on the back so it's not as prevalent or or noticeable elsewhere so if it doesn't come off then it doesn't come off it might just be the the guard was on the finish okay so there's that now we're going to reinstall the springs here there's a lot of different ways people will decide to or not. I actually put wooden blocks down in here so that the whammy would not work because the neat thing about whammy is woo -woo -woo, the unneat thing about whammy is that messes up your tuning very badly. So uh, I've put wooden blocks in here and jammed it so that there's no movement of the whammy at all. This one is not mine, so I'm going to put it back in. Um, as for the springs, a lot of people only do one spring or that or two springs. We're going to put all three in. We're going to go to the middle at the top, middle at the bottom, and then the outside two, middle to the outer edge. One spring seems to be twisted backwards. That doesn't make any sense. So, maybe it's just the way it is. All right, we're going to reinstall the springs, get the guard ready to put on the back, and then we're going to take off the neck, see what we can find out under there. I have been looking underneath the, all these things, and I'm not seeing any numbers other than the one, two, three on the back of the pots to keep them in the proper order. But there's nothing in the back here. You know, you sometimes look for initials, um, numbers. They could mean something at the factory. Okay, I'm gonna reinstall the springs and be right back. Okay, so reinstalling these springs are, is a little more complicated than I expected. And I did mess up the center spring a bit but I went all in a line because that was the easiest way to do it without damaging the rest of the guitar um, that's not even damage the springs by all means useful in that position it's just got a little wooby in it um, it will still return and all that sort of stuff um, should be no issues that way 
Uh, as I say, a lot of people only use two springs. I have my three installed, but as I say, I've also got it wood blocked so that it will not move. Okay, let's reinstall this cover. And move on to the next procedure, which is neck removal. Okay, not going to make you wait through my screwing screws in, so don't over tighten them. Make sure they're snug, blah, blah, blah. You will notice that on the back of this here plate, two screws are offset. That is basically so that you don't go through the complete procedure of putting this here in backwards so that the gap this here slot is up here where you cannot put strings on it. That's really the only reason for that. Okay, so now these are all snug but not gorilla it in. I'm going to have to go get myself a different screwdriver for here because these here screws are much larger and require something bigger than a miniature or else you're just going to strip them and you're not going to like that very much. Okay, hang on. Okay. A full-sized Phillips screwdriver. Real slow. If these things don't want to loosen right off the bat, give them a little bit of a tightening first. Just wiggle it a bit, that way you might just have to break loose a little bit. But, anyways. Okay, these screws are long because they are holding on the neck. And probably wouldn't be a bad idea to when you're pulling them out, pull them out one at a time and see if any of them are longer than the others. Like I should have done with the pick guard screws. You hear a little bit of the wood creaking. Probably just from coming loose after probably, well, chances are it probably hasn't been taken off since 1997. So, bottom two. Top two both the same all the same size okay this is different mine has a rubber grommet that goes between the plate and this which this one obviously doesn't so let's take a look okay there is something in there uh, yes SEP 97 it was made in September you probably won't be able to see that but there we go, yeah, can't get it to focus in either way, SEP 97. Don't see any shims or anything in there to try and keep it straight. This is all good, a little bit of blue right there, which doesn't make sense it doesn't seem to have come off of there but there is the made in Korea crafted in Korea serial number KV9708 2498 KV97 obviously meaning it was from 1997 K, craft, uh, Korean, blah, blah, blah. Uh, usually, let's see, 9708. 08 might mean that the neck was made in August. 
and then that was made in September and then 2498 who knows okay so we look at this everything seems good truss rod setting is at the top we don't need to do that because it was in fine shape still seems to be alrighty so that is that there are just a couple of minor scratches on the back of the neck here could probably be sanded out if you really really wanted to but it doesn't doesn't seem to affect the slide or anything okay sure everything's nice and cleaned up no issues at all obviously it went good together because they didn't have to put any shims. You'll sometimes find little pieces of wood in here. They put it back together. It's not straight. But obviously, these ones were fairly well made. Bit of glue, I'm guessing, at the top there. And the wood chipped off that has half of the E on it. So SEP 97. See if I can get this in a spot where you can read it. Nope. Take my word for it. Just take my word for it. And there is a hole in the center there. What that is for, I don't know. It does go right through. Possibly to hang when they were painting. Could be something like that. Don't understand it. Oh well. All right, let's. Give it a little bit of a more of a good clean down in here that we've said since we do have it off. As I say, mine has a rubber gasket that goes between the plate and the backing. So there's no marks in it like this one has because there are marks. From the corner, the edge of the metal bracket pushing in all right I'm going to attack that a bit more don't know if this is a grease hand smudge or what but there seems to be something on the finish just in the cutouts here That one went away. Okay. Let's put you guys on pause for a couple of minutes and we'll be right back. Okay, so now we are reinstalling the neck. What you do is screw these in by hand. Because what you want to do is make sure that the other end of these go into the actual holes that the neck has already installed in them from before tighten them as much as you can by hand that way you're assured that you're not messing up the holes that were already in there okay once you're confident that you have reached those holes Just sink them, don't tighten them. And then once you get them there, a little twist and alternate back and forth so that you're assured of a nice tight fit. Stagger the tightening pattern like you would on your car wheels, and voila, back together. Okay, 
Now let's give this thing a final clean down and get ready to restring it. I've left the knobs off because I'm going to clean them next, but that's obviously just a tedious little job. Once we get it all back together, then we'll start looking at the setup. As I say, most of it's already set up really well. The string action height is good. The uh, neck relief was good. I'm going to, of course, double check that. These here pickups need to be adjusted really bad because they were not even close. That's about the only thing I saw that way. Now, it has been repainted because right beside the screw holes here, you can see a little bit where it's worn off the black and got a little white underneath them. Um, I'm amazed there's a bunch of scratches up here. I don't know why up on the top side and they all seem to be in the exact same direction in this way. I don't know if that maybe got rubbed when it was being painted or what or possibly pick coming down from the top. Uh, this was guitar was owned by a person in a wheelchair and when you're in the wheelchair, this thing's going to sit in a different spot. And possibly the pick was hit from the top. It's hard to say. I do not understand that part. But either way, whoosh. The fretboard itself is in fairly good shape. There is one ding in it here. Um, doesn't seem to be structurally significant or anything like that. I'm not going to bother cleaning that up too much. I'm just going to wipe it down good. I don't have naphtha here, you know, uh, lighter fluid to clean it up. Well, you got to be careful what you put on your fretboards anyways. Um, a lot of things will lift the fretboard or damage the finish. So you have to be careful of what you use to clean your guitars. That's why I'm using one drop of dish soap in about maybe two cups of water. That seems to be enough. It's not harsh, it's soft. Etc. Okay. Comes up nice. There are a few dings in it here and there from obvious use. So it was a used guitar. As I say, if somebody went through the hassle of painting it black and the knobs and all that, they obviously wanted that for a reason. The only thing that's not black done on it, other than the rear plate, which of course doesn't really need to be done, is the whammy handle. Now that is a tricky thing because with it being more of a rubberized material it might not take the black very well possibly. You could always get some tape tape over it if you you know if you really really want to do that but I don't think I would paint it just for the simple fact that my guess is it would it would just chip off. Um, I do have some black paint, touch-up paint for my car. That might be because of it being more of an acrylic and a solid substance. It might last a little longer, but this plastic, my guess is, would give a bit and it would chip. So don't know, we'll check that out. Now I'm gonna clean up the knobs. Uh, not sure what I'm gonna do with them because as I say, the engraved lettering should be a different color. Um, I could put some white on there and wipe it off and hopefully have the white stay down inside. But then you've gotta do all the numbers around here and then you're gonna get into the grooves on the side because they are the old top hat style knob. I don't think it's really worth it because a lot of people don't really look at that. They're, they know that they crank it all one way. It's in the lowest position. 
and then you usually just you know not many people go down and look at it so that's where we're at be back in a couple of seconds okay I'm taking the pick card back off because the volume button the shaft was a little cockeyed so silly me thought that if I just undid this little screw here and uh, readjusted it that everything would be just honky dory no not quite the whole pot has started to twist in the back so I have to take it apart make sure the potentiometers are all aligned properly no wires were damaged in my stupidity um, and see if I can tighten it with the shafts being in a straight line so that because as you noticed I said about those two little scratches in the pit guard that was showing the white through that's why they were there it was because the actual shaft was not straight so we learn what did I say earlier the more you know well I know now okay let's open this up check the pots they are not aligned anyways one sticks this way one sticks that way one sticks that way I don't think it's gonna matter that much other than let's just see if we can make sure that the shafts sit straight once they get in there this one is a little bit out so let's see if we can loosen that a bit and find out why it is crooked Potentiometer just sits crooked. Why? I don't know. And be very careful. Aha! That's what I wanted not to do. Okay, what can we do about that? The potentiometer. Does not set level. About face. All these wires are attached to very short leads. So you can't see over the other side. And now I got to go get my super duper glasses. One second. Okay. So on the potentiometer, where the shaft goes through the hole, and there's a side rim around here, one spot, there's a little tab that sticks out just a little wee bit, and it has to fit into a hole in the board. And this one is obviously just not the right size, so I either have to bore out that hole or chop off a bit of the pot and if I'm not mistaken I can probably use one of the screws to gently widen that hole just enough for the tab to stick through probably just went through the whole guard but let's just see what happens bammo 
she's flush. And I did come through the hole, but the hole is under the button. So that works out. Now, where did the other washer go? There's a miniature washer here that I have to get. And then we are back in business. Okay. So watch for that. That's why the shaft was off kilter, was because the tab that keeps it from twisting this way, the whole pot in behind, so when you turn the volume button, or the tone button in this case, it doesn't just turn everything in the back as well. It's got a pokey through so that you just twist the shaft. Okay, the more you know. Okay, now the pot is straight and flat. Don't forget your washer and the nut. Threads are a little messed up on that one, probably from not being set straight in the first place. Okay. This one at the end. The nut is not, seems to almost be cross threaded, which could possibly have implications in keeping it level. So, all this stuff is fairly delicate. Does not take too heavy duty tools, as you see there. Okay, well, let's see what we can do. Careful. Delicate, careful. Shafts seem to be fairly straight up and down. Okay, so now just a slight bit more just to make sure that these are secure. And reinstall the pit guard. Okay, I am learning lots about these things today. Be right back. Oh yeah, long screws to the bottom. Two long screws there. The rest of the pit guard screws are all shorter ones. Remember that. And remember, always sink all the screws first off and then go back and secure them a little tight more tightly I'm not sure if this is going to make a difference but you don't want to sometimes if you tighten down the screws the first screws a couple times and then try and fit in the other ones if the plate is slightly off you're going to either damage the plate or damage the guitar by trying to put in new new screw holes okay and that's all attached now we've got our buttons our button goes down so down is that way that would turn it up being right-handed we want the buttons to kind of show to what we're looking at 
tone flat to the head and crank it up. So once you get the first one done, tone, tone, volume is always closest to the pickups. Try not to sink these too much because they do have to roll freely. Ha ha! And look what I did. Tone. Tone. Volume. And I installed the second button. Without turning it down so tone does not point in the right direction. Down, down, down. Tone. Okay, so they aren't completely flat anyways, but they're a lot better than what they were. So Alrighty, now another wipe down because in all this, of course, I've got my fingerprints all over it, so, but we've already cleaned it up good first off, so now it's just more of a dusting than anything. Okay, so when I was checking out the pickups, I found that right where the pickup meets the pick guard there was a little crusty on there I'm not sure if maybe when it was painted it was put back together before it was completely dry or not but that might have something to do with why these pickups are so far out of adjustment so I'm just going to clean up in there because I didn't want to remove the pickups from the from the plate. And if I have to go back in, I will. But let's see if we can get these pickups to adjust out. Okay, this one was way off. Okay, that's good. This one, I think these were all low. So I'm just going to even them out. This one has to come way up, I know. But we can re-check that out once we get the strings installed. Strings are... Elixir, Great Tone, Long Life, Polyweb, Original Coating, Anti-Rust, Plain Steels. This is uh, an 80 to 20 bronze acoustic, acoustic guitar strings. Okay. Well, let's take another look inside there because there were three sets of strings that came with this. Two of them were these, though. So that's why I was going to put them on because we had two sets of them and that way if somebody didn't want that then they could switch it to the other ones and I could probably still make it to the guitar store to get electrics if those other oddball ones aren't electrics hiya what did I say about going to the tool room and making sure you had everything there that you were possibly going to need yeah the other thing is read your screen stand by okay so it's about an hour later I just got back from the guitar shop getting electric strings uh, these are doo -doo -doo. Da Adrio, Da Dario, 
Bright tone around spring wound 10 through 46 X EXL 110 regular light gauge strings because this guitar is going to be for sale there's not much use in me spending all kinds getting special special strings on it away we go all right I will get you uh, back here and ready once I go get everything I need and uh, that'll be like just in about two seconds okay so we start with the low E button through the back there's a hole there come on feed it feed it why does this not work it's there's a hole right through there I can see light through it so bing. that's not it there we go this is a little weird for me because I'm left-handed and this is not a left-handed guitar so I also put the wrong string in there that was the a string and I need the E string and you can tell because it has a brass uh, rivet or whatever you want to call it on the end the strings have that written on them they are color coded okay so you run it through up to the top now rule of thumb you're putting it on the first peg right so you want to go up two from there cut it beyond the second this is the one you're feeding it into skip one the next one up I always give it just a slight bit extra do it to the top half and snap okay make sure you put this in a spot where you will find it because you have to dispose of them properly so there tail goes up past two through here kink it a little bit that will help you keep it all in the right spot and then wind some people will wind it around a couple times and then put it through don't care do what you have to but when you come around to the tail sticking out you want the string to go under there will be the tail the tail sticking through the hole you want the string to go under when it winds on and that is so that it always rolls down into the guitar this will keep it tight and not have a chance of it ever coming off because there's the tail that winds under you can get tools to wind these quicker seeing that I was just at the guitar shop I probably should have done that but oh well I wasn't expecting a trip to the guitar shop today anyways so where's my screwdriver with the blade to pull the strings up a bit and keep winding okay 
don't put too much pressure on the strings yet. Always start with the fattest string. Same thing when you're taking them off. When you're taking them off, start with the skinniest string. Because what you're going to do with this here wooby wooby, you take the large strings off, that puts a lot of extra pressure on these ones and it'll snap. You put this one on first, then you got a chance of snapping those ones when you're tightening them up. Don't know how that actually works, but okay. Now, A string, which is a red spool on the end of the spring. string. In through the hole, make sure it goes about an extra inch or two. Roll up. Go, you're starting here, so now you're going to go up two extra and cut there. When you're cutting, try and get your fingers on both sides so that one doesn't snap into your face and the other one doesn't go shooting across the room. Okay, I'm going to get the rest of them on here for now and uh, I'll come back to you. It's no use in you watching me string them all. Okay, we're under the last string. And there's just a couple things that you need to know about this. Obviously you or double checking your string colors and everything. Now the string goes down into this here slot and inside there you can see the back of the whammy, whammy whammy. And there are obviously six holes in there of which you need to thread the strings. Now, once you get in there and you pull them through, you'll notice there's a little spool on the end of the string here. I'm not going to up close it, but when it goes down in there, you want to make sure that once it goes into the little spindle, the hole that it goes through, that it goes down roughly about another inch before the string tightens at the other end. That is so that you know that it is seated completely and you don't go halfway through tuning it up and then all of a sudden ping and it goes off there. The other thing you need to know is that at this end once you get down into the last two you don't have anything to guide by so you pick what looks to be about two and snap it there. Okay, and I'll be right back. Just wanted to let you in on that fact. Okay, so we've pretty much restrung it now. It's going to take a while to tune it because with that uh, moving in down there for the whammy bar, you will tune, 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 tune. By the time you get up to here, this one's out. So it's got to be tune, 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 tune. And just try and do it that way. I think maybe it might be better to start on the lower string so that. No. You want to do it on the higher string and go down through. Higher string as in the low note. Um. Once we get that all tuned up, I'm going to reset these here pickups to the right height. I can't really play it for you because, well, the sticky part's going out the wrong end for me. So, I will uh, get it all together and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, if, uh, if this is the end of the video, then thank you very much for watching. Watch out for this thing on Facebook. Bye now. Okay, I am back just to finish this off a little bit. I have restrung it. I have tuned it up. Of course, as I say, I can't push it. 
I can make noises with it because, well, as I say, the sticky thing is in the wrong spot. But we have now gone through this guitar, opened it up, made sure everything was in working order. I live in an apartment. I'm on the eighth floor, so I can't really crank it up and see what is going to go on with it. Uh, my apologies for the coloring of the quality of the video. It's getting later in the day now and I'm losing light. So, there we go. One 1997 Squire Stratocaster. It seemed to have all the original electronics inside. The only things that looks like it was done was it was painted black here and the fretboard and the machine heads have been switched out for pings I think is what they say on this one. Um, I don't know if you can see very well there but there are still the little screw holes from where the originals were on there which I don't understand because my 87 Strat has the similar setup to this. I don't know that they're pings or not, but it seems that the machine heads were changed so that they could be black and match the rest of the blackout. Now, the only thing that's really not black on it is that. I'm not going to touch that, of course, but the whammy bar. And I happen to have some black paint that might just do that. Might even try that out here and uh, put it on there before the end of this video. So if you'll give me a couple of minutes, I have to run down to the car, get the touch-up paint, and go from there. Because it's either that or it's electrical tape, and that just makes a mess of everything. Okay. Swish, swish, swish. Actually, by the time I get this thing painted in that, I won't have enough light. So, there you go. One, 1997 Squire Stratocaster in royal blue. That blue that you're seeing there is a little more accurate to what it actually looks like. So it's the blue blackout is what I'm going to call it. Okay, if you think you need a 1997 Squire Stratocaster in royal blue blackout, by all means, check my Facebook page and uh, it might just be there. We also have, just so you know, on top of the guitar, There's also a Fender Stage 112 SE. It might be on separately, might do it as a package. I've gone through, I haven't lit this up because as I say, I live on the eighth floor of an apartment building. So I'm pretty sure people aren't gonna be really too happy if I wind this up because all the background I could see about these things were that people in their houses could only turn it up to almost one without blowing the doors off everything so it's a professional amp this is something you can gig with you could do like um, not concert halls maybe I don't know but uh, arenas that sort of thing it would uh, certainly do the job from what I've been told. And I haven't wound it up yet. I think I might take it down to the shop, wind her out there because I can do that and there won't be anybody for miles. And then if I do that, I'm gonna take this strat and my strat 
and wind them both out. So, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye now.